Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. Uh, so, uh, in this video, we are going to discuss biochemistry 2012 to 2013, right? So, I decided to divide biochemistry into four parts, right? So, this first part is going to be the longest uh, because I will be laying out basic concepts. Uh, like, in the following uh, papers will be more like revision because everything is within these two papers, right? So, let's get into it. Question number one, characteristic sign of glycogenosis, right? Glycogenosis is uh, actually a glycogen storage disease, right? So in, in this part, we will be uh, discussing uh, uh, glycogenolysis, right? Glycogenolysis is just breaking down of glycogen to produce what? To produce our... Uh, glucose because it seems like this patient's blood there is low glucose right so let's read again characteristic sign of uh, glycogenosis is muscle pain during physical work blood examination reveals usually hypoglycemia that's low glucose this pathology is caused by uh, congenital deficiency of the following enzyme Right, so let's just uh, review the process and then you will see the answer, right? Okay, uh, okay, let me go just, uh, just a second. Right, okay, so uh, what you are looking at right now is uh, just a sketch. It, it can help you to understand uh, the process of glycogenolysis, right? So here... Is, uh, is the glycogen, right? This one is the glycogen with branches and its basic component is called glycogenin, right? This one, glycogenin is more like a backbone, right? So here what you are looking at, uh, these kind of bones like along here are actually uh, alpha-1,4 glycosidic bones, right? And for branching, for, for these branches, uh, you see these are alpha-1,6 glycosidic bonds, right? Alpha-1,6 glycosidic bonds, right? So the enzyme needed for uh, uh, destruction of this gl uh, glycogen is glycogen phosphorylase, right? This guy you are looking at is uh, glycogen phosphorylase, right? So uh, what does it do? Uh, you can see in this bag, it is uh, phosphates, right? So it will be throwing phosphates uh, on 1,4 uh, glycosidic bonds, alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds, right? So in, 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 in so doing, it will be releasing uh, glucose 1-phosphate, glucose 1-phosphate, one by one, right? Okay. So uh, the other thing before I continue, you can see on these ears, uh, this one is actually a vitamin. Uh, it's vitamin uh, B6, right? Right. So the coenzyme, its name is uh, pyridoxal phosphate, right? It's a derivative of vitamin B6, right? Okay, let's follow. Uh, from uh, glucose 1-phosphate, there will be conversion to glucose 6-phosphate. And uh, this reaction is mediated by phosphoglucomutase, right? It, it will uh, convert glucose 1-phosphate to glucose 6-phosphate, right? Glucose 6-phosphate, this one cannot be utilized in muscles because muscles, they lack an enzyme called glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. I will show you what happens, right? So what you are looking at here, this one is uh, some kind, it's um, uh, a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, right? Uh, so inside it, you see this enzyme, this enzyme. Again, it's called glucose 6-phosphatase, glucose 6-phosphatase, okay? Uh, right, so this one will cleave a phosphate uh, uh, and releasing glucose, so you can see glucose entering uh, the bloodstream, right? Okay, so uh, this enzyme, I said it, uh, you, you don't find it in muscles, it's mainly found in the liver, kidneys, particularly the uh, proximal convoluted tubule and duodenum, right? But the most important uh, place where you find glucose 6-phosphatase is the liver, right? 
Okay, so I talked about uh, like uh, cleavage of alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds, right? So let's talk about alpha-1,6 because here uh, glycogen phosphorylase, it, it cleaves like, uh, like each and every uh, alpha-1,4 until the chain remains with four, four glucose molecules, right? With four glucose molecules, one, two, three, four, right? You can see here. There are four, right? So there is another enzyme called debranching enzyme. Debranching enzyme, it will take three, uh, three molecules and put them to the to this uh, long chain so that it will, uh, it will uh, give the glycogen phosphorylase to continue its work, right? So this one is the debranching enzyme, right? So it 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 put its it put the three molecules here, right here. And then here will be remaining with one molecule, right? And this one will, uh, and th this component of this enzyme will, will cleave the alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond, right? So this one will release uh, glucose. This one will be pure glucose, unlike here where there is a release of alpha of glucose 1 phosphate. Here is pure glucose into blood, right? So we can say, uh, this debranching enzyme is alpha 1 6 glycosidase component and alpha 1 4 glycosidase components, right? So, uh, in the question, the question was uh, talking about uh, glycogen phosphorylase. There was deficiency of glycogen phosphorylase. Right. So, here we can see the answer is glycogen phosphorylase, right? Okay. Uh, next question. Examination of a child who hasn't got fresh fruit and vegetables during winter uh, revealed numerous subcutaneous hemorrhages, gingivitis, carious cavities in teeth. Uh, what vitamin combination should be prescribed in this case? Right. So this kid didn't get uh, fresh fruits. Right. From fresh fruits, uh, we get a routine. And from vegetables, vitamin C, also known as ascorbic acid. So that is what you have to look for uh, on your answers, right? That's ascorbic acid, vitamin C, and, uh, and routine, right? So you can see like these symptoms, subcutaneous hemorrhages, gingivitis. Uh, these are symptoms of uh, scurvy, right? So if you know uh, vitamin, B, vitamin C, also known as ascorbic acid, its deficiency will lead to scurvy, right? So the answer is A, ascorbic acid and routine. A two-year-old child with, with mental and physical retardation has been delivered to a hospital. He presents with frequent vomiting after having a meal. Uh, there is phenylpyruvic acid in urine. Which metabolism abnormality is the reason for this pathology, right? You can see uh, this uh, is actually happening after feeding. Vomiting is happening after feeding. Uh, and also mental and physical uh, retardation. This may be the symptoms of uh, um, PKU, right? And you, you see in, in the urine, there is phenylpyruvic acid, right? So this is definitely a disorder of uh, phenylalanine metabolism, right? It's an amino acid. So the answer is amino acid metabolism, not lipid, not carbohydrate or water salt, what, what. The answer is amino acid metabolism. After severe viral hepatitis, a four-year-old boy presents with vomiting, occasional loss of consciousness, convulsions, um, Blood test revealed hyperammonemia. Such condition is caused by disorder of the following biochemical hepatic process. Right. You see, firstly, like uh, there is hyperammonemia. It means like there is a uh, large concentrations of ammonia. What does this mean? This this means there is a disorder in uh, like. Uh, De detoxifying ammonia right so there is a disorder in uh in urea cycle 
Okay, let's see. Okay, so so you you already know the answer. Uh, disorder of ammonia neutralization, right? So let's see how how it works, right? So this one is the uh, urea cycle. Okay, how do you remember this? This is a simple mnemonic. Ordinarily, careless scrapers are also frivolous about urination. <laughs> okay, so you you start here, like uh. So, so firstly, you need to know like uh, this part, it, it takes place in the mitochondria, right? This part, it takes place in the mitochondria and this one is in the cytosol, right? So here from the mitochondria, we get citrulline. Citrulline will combine with aspartate to form aginosuccinate and aginosuccinate will uh, cleave a fumarate molecule to uh, then will be left with arginine and the arginine Will, uh, will be acted upon by arginase to form onithin, right? Onithin will uh, combine with carbamoyl phosphate, right? Carbamoyl phosphate here. So onithin transcarbamoylase will uh, mediate this reaction to form a citrulline again, right? So uh, where did we get this carbamoyl phosphate? Uh, we need... Uh, uh, carbonic acid right so carbonic acid we get it from combination of what combining wa uh, water and carbon dioxide so then uh, we'll combine this molecule with ammonia right with ammonia and uh, the the process is mediated by carbamoyl phosphate synthesis one right so you need to remember carbamoyl phosphate synthesis we, we have two right uh Carbamoyl phosphate synthesis one. This one is found uh, in the mitochondria and it takes part in what? Uh, in uh, urea cycle, right? And then we have another one is carbamoyl phosphate synthesis two. That one is found in uh, uh, in nucleo, nucleotides, right? In like see, all those synthesis of DNA, RNA, we, we, we will see it. Uh, just a moment. All right. So the in this question there is deficient. There is a, a a disorder in this cycle, right? That's why we have high concentration of ammonia, right? That's why we have hyperammonemia. Okay. Before the cells can utilize glucose. Oh, sorry. Before the cells can utilize glucose, it is first trans transported from extracellular space through a uh, plasmic membrane inside them. This process is stimulated by the following hormone, right? So this one is, is basically insulin, right? Because glucose... Uh, okay, okay, let me just remind you about uh, glucose transporters, right? Uh, so they are... Uh, four main glucose trans transporters uh glut one glut one is found in blood if we say blood this one is actually red blood cells it's also found on our uh, blood brain barrier and sometimes uh in the heart but lesser extent right the second one this one is very important because this one is also known as uh insulin independent insulin independent right so this one is found in the liver pancreas and small intestine right uh glut 3 this one is found mainly in the brain right that's brain neurons and sperm uh glut 4 glut 4 is uh, what we are talking about here this one is insulin dependent right uh this channel is opened in presence of insulin right so uh it's found in skeletal muscles adipose and heart right so here the answer is insulin right this mole these molecules right will open in the presence of insulin uh facilitating the entrance of glucose into the cells right so the answer is insulin here that's the hormone which stimulates the entry of glucose into cells a 36 year old uh female patient has a history of collagen disease urine analysis is likely to reveal an increased concentration of the following uh metabolite right so here i marked the answer already is 
uh, oxyproline, uh, right? Sometimes they can refer to this one mostly in most cases is hydroxy hydroxyproline hydroxyproline because there is a, a stage in collagen synthesis where there is hydroxylation of uh, proline right okay so this one is just uh, a scheme for collagen synthesis right so collagen is synthesized uh, by the fibroblast right so here you see the nucleus uh, releasing the collagen mRNA right so if we zoom into the this uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum if we zoom we we can see this firstly here there is pre pro collagen right uh like it is uh it is an alpha alpha chain backbone with uh with glycine right and then the second stage this one is hydroxylation that's why we have, you see this OH molecules right hydroxylation of uh proline and lysine right this stage requires vitamin c right it requires vitamin c if there is deficient of this vitamin you have a uh, scurvy right uh then the third stage there is addition of sugar molecule so this one is known as glycosylation right and then as a result we will get a pro collagen uh, uh, chain right so it's actually a triple helix uh, then it will be uh, released like uh, through the uh, Golgi apparatus that's exos exocytosis and releasing this structure but you can see it is loose ends so we, we call it cutting loose ends this process cleavage of a pro collagen C and N terminals right so after this cleavage then this one will be a little bit stronger right but uh we need to make sure that the it is very strong we need to form cross links right so formation of cross links uh this one uh is mediated by the enzyme lysyl oxidase and this enzyme it needs copper right it needs copper i will tell you the disease uh like uh, if there is deficiency of of what of uh of copper here or if there is deficient of action of this uh lysyl oxidase right i okay let's see so here i said uh the answer is what is oxyproline or hydroxyproline okay uh vitamin a together with with specific cytoreceptors penetrates through the nuclear membranes uh induces a transcription process that stimulate growth and differentiation of cells this biological function is realized uh, by the following form of vitamin a let me just start by telling you the wrong answers right carotene retinol uh cis retinol cis retinol if you still remember uh like in uh, like in in the roads there is conversion of 11 cis to o trans right 11 cis to o trans right now right so these two answers are wrong so uh the form of a vitamin needed for uh induction of transcription and also like uh uh a stimulation of differentiation for example uh glandular cells to make them uh produce for example hormones uh this one this uh that function is mediated by transretinoic acid transretinoic acid is the answer here okay next to prevent post operative bleeding a 6 year old child uh was that is a synthetic no i don't know what happened on this question okay but i'm sure like this uh six year old boy was given a synthetic analog of vitamin k name the post translational changes of blood coagulation factors that will be activated by vicaso right okay so this patient this six year old child was given vicaso which is a synthetic for form or synthetic and synthetic and synthetic analog i'm sorry guys synthetic analog of vitamin k okay so 
uh, like the question is asking like uh, the actual uh, post translational uh, modification of um, coagulation factors, right? So which factors need uh, vitamin K? Okay, let me help you to remember, right? Okay, but first you see like uh, what happens is like this. This is an oxidized form of vitamin A. It's acted upon by what? By epoxide reductase to make it what a reduced form, right? So if it is reduced, that's where there will be activation of what of uh, these clotting factors you see here. So the process is what is a uh, gamma uh, is mediated by gamma carboxylase, right? So is the process is carboxylation. Uh, which factors uh, need vitamin K? You can see them: factor two, factor seven, factor nine, factor ten and proteins C, S, and Z, right? You can see here they are acted upon by gamma carboxylase uh, to make them what? To make them active. And vitamin K is actually a what? Uh, a, a, in its reduced form, it's a, it's, it's a cofactor, right? So uh, the answer here is carboxylation of glutamic acid, right? Carboxylation of glutamic acid. Emotional stress causes activation of hormone sensitive triglyceride lipase in the adipo adipocytes. What secondary mediator takes part in this process? Right. Okay, let me see if I have any additional notes here. Okay. Exactly. So stress hormones here can be epinephrine, epinephrine, glucagon, right? So when they uh, act upon the seven pass receptors, right, for example, then there will be uh, like activation of adenylate cyclase, right? This enzyme will convert ATP to cyclic AMP, right? Cyclic AMP will stimulate uh Protein kinase A in this case, this protein kinase A will activate a uh, hormone sensitive lipase from active to inactive, right? If it is active, this hormone sensitive lipase will uh, cleave the what triglycerides into free fat acids and glycerol, right? So the question is asking our uh, secondary mediator in this process is cyclic AMP, right? Cyclic adenosine monophosphate in full okay so this is our answer a patient has been diagnosed with alcaptoyuria if you still remember Al alcaptoyuria uh, alcaptoyuria this is uh, a disorder in um, amino acid metabolism i will show you uh, like how it happens first before you see any enzyme here alcaptoyuria amino acid metabolism which one okay so here i have the basic ones right uh there is a conversion or from phenylalanine to tyrosine and then from tyrosine we can uh have um dopa and from dopa we can have melanin Right, and also from tyrosine, we can go uh, to this part where we will synthesize the mediators of our, uh, or we can say like the intermediates, intermediates of our uh, Krebs cycle. Right here, firstly, we will form what maleoacetoacetate acid, uh, maleoacetoacetic acid, then fumarate, and then we will shunt it into what uh, tricarboxylic acid cycle. Right, so okay, let's uh start again here from phenylalanine to tyrosine. This process is mediated by what uh by phenylalanine hydroxylase. If there is a deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase, the patient will have PKU, right? Uh, then from dopa to melanin, the process is mediated by tyrosinase right so even sometimes they can just say like from tyrosine direct directly to melanin is the enzyme will remain tyrosinase if it is there then the uh 
the patient will develop what we have uh, albinism right and from tyrosine this one can be shunted to homogentesic acid and then this homogentesic acid in presence of homogentesate oxidase it will be converted to maleoacetoacetic acid and then fumarate to this cycle but if there is uh, a deficiency of homogentesic oxidase then the patient will develop alkaptoyuria right alkaptoyuria uh okay so let's go and read our question again i wanted to talk about like the appearance for example uh like the 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 skin there will be deposition of a homogentesic acid so it will look blue and also there will be if you if, if a patient uh urinate somewhere and keep the urine like for example in a container it will change color okay so let me show you right so the clinical findings include bluish black connective tissue uh so uh like and also uh ear cartilage and sclera will turn black on prolonged exposure to light let me read again i light right so i i said like bluish black connective tissue ear cartilage and sclera right so these uh three things will turn bluish black and then urine will turn black on prolonged exposure to air okay so let's check our question again okay so choosing enzyme whose deficiency can be the reason for this pathology i told you is homogentesic oxidase or homogentesic acid oxidase is same thing right so this one will be our answer a 60 year old patient was found to have a dysfunction of main digestive enzyme saliva this caused the disturbance of primary hydrolysis of what okay so which main enzyme do you find in saliva is saliva amylase also known as tyrolin right what's the function digestion of starch right amylose and amylopectin if you still remember those things from high school right so it's actual those are carbohydrates right they are polymers of glucose so they are uh, they are carbohydrates so carbohydrates is the answer osteolaterism is characterized by a uh, decrease in collagen st uh, strength caused by much less intensive formation of crosslinks in collagen fibrils uh, this phenomenon is caused by the low activity of the following enzyme right if you still remember i said uh like uh these close cross links uh are formed by the enzyme lysyl oxidase right uh, and lysyl oxidase i said it needs it needs copper right it's copper containing enzyme uh, and if there is um, uh, a disorder of or if there is a problem with cr cross links uh, the disease that will happen there is called menkes disease or menkes disease right so in this case okay let's just review again so there is exocytosis of the a pro collagen uh, chain and then it will be cleaved on the like n and c terminals and then cross links right so this enzyme which which helps in cross linking is lysyl oxidase right and that's on a that's the answer lysyl oxidase an oncological patient had been administered methotrexate okay with time target cells of the tumor lost sensitivity to this drug at the same time the change in gene expression of the following enzyme was observed All right you just need to know the target of the this drug called what methotrexate All right so uh this one is like uh through uh if you still remember the the de novo pathway synthesis of uh nucleotides right so uh specifically from uh 
DUMP. DUMP is a deoxyuridine monophosphate. It's converted to deoxythiamidine monophosphate, deoxythiamidine monophosphate. And the enzyme which stimulates uh, this pathway is thiamidylate thiamid thiamid synthase. Okay, thiamidylate synthase, right? Uh, and oh, it needs a coenzyme. A coenzyme for this enzyme is called what? Uh, tetrahydrofolate, right? Tetrahydrofolate. Here, that's where we have it in the form of methylene tetrahydrofolate right so when it reacts it is converted to um, dihydrofolate right dihydrofolate but we this one it cannot uh, uh, help in stimulation of this pathway we need to convert it back to what to tetrahydrofolate that's where we will have a reductase we will reduce it uh, by the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase right so uh, the this drug is targeting uh, this enzyme dihydrofolate reductase, right? This um, methotrexate, <laughs> methotrexate, methotrexate. Okay, my pharmacology is poor, guys. I'm not going to do pharmacology videos. I promise, right? Uh, and also like other enzymes. If you still remember, like. Uh, uh, this one is called what? Pyrimethamine. Pyrimethamine is another drug which also inhibits this uh, this enzyme, dihydrofolate reductase. Right? Okay. A 64-year-old man has impairment of twilight vision, right? Uh, what vitamin should be recommended in the first place is vitamin A, definitely. Examination of a patient uh, revealed second-grade obesity. It is known that he consumes a lot of sweets and rich food. This sedentary way of life, okay, okay, this many a sedentary way of life. That's why anabolic metabolism has the priority in, the, in, in his organism. Which of the following pathways is amphibolic, right? Amphibolic. Amphibolic, this one is biochemical pathway with both uh, anabolism and catabolism, right? So, uh, like the 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 main cycle which contains like these two these two processes, catabolism and anabolism, is the Krebs cycle, also known as a uh, tricarboxylic acid cycle or cycle of tricarboxylic acids on A here, right? Okay, so uh, here let me just show you. Uh, the this process is anabolism and catabolism for example uh for carbohydrates uh the anabolic pathway will be like uh conversion of what of uh oxaloacetate into uh and shunting it into a gluconeogenesis pathway i will show you uh, i have a, i have a question about gluconeogenesis right and for cat catabolism here there is a uh, pyruvate Right, this one is a product of glycolysis, uh, and it this one will be converted into what into acetyl CoA. So this one is uh, a cut is catabolism, right? For amino acids, there is uh, some intermediate intermediates of this cycle. For example, like uh, alpha ketoglutarate or oxaloacetate. These ones they are used for synthesis of non-essential amino acids thus glutamate and aspartate respectively right that's anabolism or anabolic precursor then for catabolism amino acids from uh, intermediates also right they can be used like for example fumarate if you still remember on uh, urea cycle there was a release of fumarate uh, 
uh, from urea from urea it will be converted to malate and shunted into it uh, and also uh, there was uh, like this one on homogenetic acid if you still remember it that, that one there will be conversion at the later stage will be fumarate and then uh, into what into the Krebs cycle uh, okay so here on fatty acids there is a uh, citrate citrate will be used for synthesis of what of fatty acids is anabolism for catabolism is fatty acids uh, from acetyl CoA and also odd chain fatty acids from succino CoA. This one will be used for what? Uh, gluconeogenesis. Uh, another uh, example here uh, we have porphyrins. Porphyrins, here specifically a succino CoA. Succino CoA will be used for making what? Porphyrins, uh, for example, in him right okay that was i don't know hard or what but if you know your uh a crib cycle you uh, you remember some of the uh intermediates that i just talked about but i have the uh, crib cycles like later you will see it will review it uh in detail okay uh a four-year child with hereditary renal lesion has signs of rickets Vitamin D concentration in the blood is normal, right? So, what is the most probable cause of rickets development, right? So, let's look at, uh, like, uh, vitamin D pathway and see where, uh, where something went wrong. Okay, so here it is. Uh, from our skin, if, if it's exposed to UV light, right, the dehydrocholesterol will be converted to what? To cholecalciferol. Cholecalciferol will go to the liver and it will be acted upon by what? 25 hydroxylase. 25 hydroxylase is the enzyme found in the liver. It will convert cholecalciferol to 25 hydroxyvitamin D, right? 25 hydroxyvitamin D. Then this 25 hydroxyvitamin D will go to the kidney. Right, and in the kidney, it will be acted upon by one alpha hydroxylase. Right, one alpha hydroxylase, uh, and it will be converted to one twenty-five dehydroxy vitamin B three, also known as calcitriol. Trial. This one is the active form of vitamin D. Right, and it acts as a hormone. Right, so that patient is uh, a disorder in the kidney. It means this enzyme one alpha hydroxylase uh is a problem right or we can say is a deficiency of this enzyme right so that is why we see rickets in in that patient right so uh the problem is impaired synthesis of calcitriol right here formation of calcitriol from 25 hydroxy vitamin d3 that is where the disorder is, right? So the answer will be what? Impaired synthesis of calcitriol. A patient presents with dysfunction of cerebral cortex accompanied by epileptic seizures. Uh, he has been administered a biogenic amine synthesized from glutamate and responsible for central inhibition, thus GABA. Right, you, you just need to know this one. You don't need uh, a very deep explanation, but uh, this is what I do. I give you more. Right, uh, I just want to show you some uh, some other molecules which are uh, formed like from from amino acids. Right, for example, here uh, I have wait. This one was just an explanation of. Uh, you know, GABA is. Uh, is used for inhibition, right? If it is uh, not there, if there is, is, is dysfunction, there is no inhibition. That's where we have seizures, epileptic seizures, right? So this substance is GABA, right? That's, that was the answer. Okay, this is what I want to show you, right? Um, okay, let's start from where? Okay, let's start from glutamate, right? Glutamate, that's the amino acid and then here is converted to what to GABA right and it needs what 
uh, vitamin B6, and also here, serotonin, right? Serotonin is coming from tryptophan, right? And then from there to melatonin. Another one which you need to remember is uh, histamine. Histamine, it, it comes from histidin. And this one, porphyrin, porphyrin, which is used in him, is it comes from glycine. Uh, what else? You also need to remember which one? Arginine. No, arginine is not very important, but just to remember it. from arginine, we have uh, creatine, urea, and nitric acid, right? So you can see, like, some of the pathways, like from tryptophan to serotonin, here you need tetrahydro. Biopterin, tetrahydrobiopterin, that's BH4, and vitamin B6, uh, right? And from tryptophan to niacin, right? Niacin, that's where we have uh, your NAD and NADP+, right? So this one, you need a riboflavin, that's uh, B2 and B6 pyridoxin, right? Then from phenylalanine, it can be converted to tyrosine and then to dopa, to dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine, right? So you just need to remember from phenylalanine, remember this, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Then from tryptophan, remember uh, NAD and NADP+, plus, and then also remember serotonin. Serotonin is also known as, uh, uh, like they, they say, they say it's, five um it's called what i'm confusing the name okay they 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 call it like five htp five hydroxy tryptophan right five hydroxy tryptophan okay uh and then histidine histamine that one is simple glycine porphyrin him uh, glutamate gaba and glutathione uh and also here arginine there is what creatine urea and nitric acid right okay perfect but for this question the we, we just needed to remember a glutamate right glutamate to gab so it's gamma amino butyric acid that's gamma okay ah okay this is interesting a male patient has been diagnosed with acute radiation disease Laboratory examination revealed a considerable reduction of platelet serotonin level. The likely cause of pl platelet serotonin reduction is the distributed metabolism of the following substance, right? So I said uh, serotonin is also known as what? 5-hydroxytryptophan, uh, right? But here they just referred to it as uh five oxytryptophan yeah it's it's almost the same thing right that's the answer five oxytryptophan a patient diagnosed with focal tuberculosis of the upper lobe of the right lung had been taking isoniazid right isoniazid is uh for tb if you still remember ripe right that's the eye part uh, as a part of combination therapy after some time, the patient reported uh, of muscle weakness, decreased skin sensitivity, blurred vision, impaired motor coordination. Um, okay, so which vitamin preparation should be used to address this phenomenon? Right, just to remember, if you are giving um, a patient isoniazid, make sure there is vitamin B6, right? That's you ju just need to re you just need to remember this one. Vitamin A, you know it is for what for uh for vision and vitamin D. This one, if it is deficient, then the patient will develop a rickets. Vitamin uh, B twelve. This one is cyanocobalamin. This one, the deficiency of this vitamin is usually associated with uh like for example uh people who have uh. That diphlobothrum, uh, diphlobothriasis, right? Because that parasite, it it destroys the intrinsic factor for absorption of this vitamin. So the patient will have what what kind of anemia, megaloblastic anemia. 
vitamin C is scurvy and I said we get this one from uh, vegetables right v vitamin C is also known as what ascorbic acid right uh, vitamin B6 is the answer here okay so okay here I just uh, highlighted but okay uh, so uh, this vitamin again should be included if you are giving someone oral contraceptives right because uh, this patient uh, will, uh, like if the patient take isoniazid and oral uh, uh, contraceptives, other than uh, decrease the skin sensitivity, blurred vision, impaired motor coordination, the patient can also develop sideroblastic anemia, right, due to impair impaired hemoglobin synthesis and ion excess, right? So here the, your answer was supposed to be vitamin b6 excuse me hemoglobin uh, catabolism results in a release of iron which is transported to bone marrow by a certain transfer protein and used again for synthesis of hemoglobin. Specify this uh, transfer protein, right? So this transfer protein, you just need to remember. If, if you know your chemistry, the, like the chemical symbol for ion is Fe. If it, the, it can be Fe2 plus or 3 plus, right? It's, it's for ferritin, right? So the name is there, like the answer is there, it's very close. It's transferring, ferrin, ferritin, right? So it's transferring, right? What about transcobalamin? This one, I told you recently, uh, uh, transcobalamin is uh, transported by, uh, it, it, it transports vitamin B12, uh, haptoglobin, it transports hemoglobin, ceruloplasmin, uh, ceruloplasmin, it transports copper, right? Okay, so there is uh, a disease known as uh, Wilson's disease, right? In Wilson's disease, the patient will have uh, a mutation on ATP7B, right? That gene called ATP7B, uh, like, uh, is for synthesis of ceruloplasmin, right? Ceruloplasmin, which carries copper. Just to remember that it's easy. Ceruloplasmin, copper. Or if you check the chemical symbol, Cu, ceruloplasmin, subtract ER here, and then you can remember it, right? Up to globin, same, almost same as hemoglobin. And then transcobalamin, the, because this vitamin B12 is cyanocobalamin. So the answer is always close, but we tend to think too much. Okay. And what about albumin? This one is a lot of functions, right? Uh, and before you, you do anything, just remember, our albumin is mainly for oncotic pressure. We'll talk about it in physiology, right? But other functions here uh, include uh, transport, transporting conjugated bilirubin, uh, fatty acids, and hormones, as well as from other drugs, right? There are other drugs which are also transported by albumin a 42 year old male patient with gout has an increased blood uric acid concentration in order to reduce the level of uric acid the doctor administered him allopurinol allopurinol is a competitive inhibitor of which of the following enzymes you already know it is xanthine oxidase but do you know the pathway like the exact place where uh, this en enzyme works right okay let me help you right so here you can see uh this pathway they are, which are combining there is de novo synthesis okay de novo from you right de novo synthesis of what of uh nucleotides and also there is a uh, like salvage pathway. Okay, look, if you check here, we have a nucleotide in this level, GMP, IMP, and AMP, right? 
this one is guanosine monophosphate uh so this one can be converted to what to guanosine this one is now a nucleoside and guanine is the base right so this guanine uh can be converted to xanthine and from xanthine to uric acid there is the enzyme called what xanthine oxidase which is um blocked by what allopurinol right so it's uh, it's competitive inhibition right and from uric acid there will be what uh urate oxidase it converts uric acid to allantoin right that was about guanine this pathway right uh what about amp so from amp we have adenosine adenosine is our what is our nucleoside right and uh, its conversion to ionosine uh is mediated by ada right what is ada ada is adenosine deaminase adenosine deaminase right and it can be impaired if the patient had severe combined immunodeficiency uh and also this enzyme can be inhibited by cladribin or pentostatin pentostatin can inhibit uh, this enzyme ada right so from ionosine we can get hypoxanthine and then from hypoxanthine we get xanthine and you can see this uh, both of these pathways are mediated by xanthine oxidase uh to form uric acid and then alan alantoin going there right then uh this part is not relevant for this question what i'm going to tell you right now but it's relevant for the next question i will show you uh okay so this one i i said there is a phosphoribose pyrophosphate right this one it comes from what it comes from uh uh pentose phosphate pathway right like if you if you eat, particularly like a ribose 5 phosphate right so uh this phosphoribose or pyrophosphate will combine with guanosine to form gmp and also uh this molecule again can combine with hypoxanthine to form imp and then amp so that's where we have what your nucleotide so remember oh the basic thing is that these are purines right so in general just you know like uh uric acid is from degradation of purines and what are which ones are the purines uh adenine and guanine right okay so here i was saying like this part is not uh relevant to this question but is uh relevant to the next there is uh this enzyme this one this enzyme which which mediates uh like uh like uh conversion of guanine to guanosine monophosphate and hypoxanthine to ionosine monophosphate uh this enzyme is known as hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribose transferase right hgprt right if it is deficient and this one is sex linked so it happens in boys the disease will be called what lishnian syndrome right you will see it uh, we have a question about this part right right but for this question we were only talking about uh uh uric acid there, were, there was uric acid uh uh in the patient and then there was uh, the the doctor uh prescribed allopurinol to inhibit uh xanthine oxidase here and here thereby reducing the amount of uric acid which definitely causes gout right yes okay so let's see so the enzyme being inhibited is xanthine oxidase right so uh other enzymes which are listed here we talked about them you know exactly where they work and you know exactly why they are wrong answers here okay next glycogen polysaccharide is synthesized from active form of glucose the immediate donor of glucose residue uh, during the glycogenesis formation of glycogenesis is what okay so here i need to remove my face again because i have uh, something important
right so look uh glycogen polysaccharide so this one we are talking about glycogenesis formation of glycogen previously uh if you still remember we talked about glycogenolysis the destruction of what of glycogen all right so okay let's see all right so uh let's start here uh let's just say this uh this cell let's just say it's a, it's a hepatocyte right this one is happening in the liver this pathway right so if this this molecule you are seeing here is actually what a glucose molecule right so it enters into the what into the hepatocyte via a glut transporter and i say this is the hepatocyte is in the liver it's glut 2 right so upon entering it reacts with something right uh, like because there is an enzyme in the liver, uh, there is a glucokinase, and in the muscles, the equivalent enzyme is exokinase, right? Glucokinase is the wrong spelling, should be C, glucokinase, right? Uh, so, like to avoid, uh, uh, like to prevent this molecule from going back, we put something here, we put a phosphate, right? So glucokinase, a kinase, uh, it it is is uh, moving like a phosphate, right? So we get what uh, we we use ATP and then we get ADP. Now the 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 molecule we have here is actually what glucose six phosphate, right? This one glucose six phosphate, and then we use uh, a mutase enzyme first for glucomutase to form glucose one phosphate, right? This one is an important um, is an important component for synthesis of glycogen. Then we stop here on a glucose one phosphate. We need to uh, find something. It's called UTP, right? Uridine triphosphate, right? You can see here it is like uh, uh, base sugar and phosphates, right? It is three phosphates. That's triphosphate. So there is cleavage of two phosphate molecules forming uh, like so this two part will be pyrophosphate it can be used as a source of energy right but here the important thing is we remain with uh with uh, sh uh sugar base and one phosphate right so this one this molecule now is called what uh uridine monophosphate uridine monophosphate so you have two things uridine monophosphate and glucose one phosphate these two will combine to form udp glucose right udp glucose right so this udp glucose is the immediate donor we are talking about in this in this uh question is uh, immediate donor of glucose right but i told you the backbone of glucose is a molecule called what called glycogenin here right glycogenin so uh udp molecules will be combining with uh, a glycogenin right and in each step the on on putting uh like uh these uh glucose molecules here there will be like release of udp 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 like that right okay so uh this process uh initially it starts as like auto glycosylation it doesn't need an enzyme but later as time goes on there will be an introduction of a new enzyme called uh, glycogen synthase right glycogen synthase will continue and also if we need to form branches right if we need to form branches we we use the branching enzyme and remember in glycogenolysis on degradation we use debranching enzyme right but here on synthesis branching enzyme right autoglycosylation then glycogen synthase and uh, a branching enzyme, right? Right, so here the immediate donor is UDP glucose, right? And now you already know why glucose 1-phosphate is wrong and why uh, ADP glucose is wrong, including glucose 6-phosphate and glucose 3-phosphate it's wrong again okay so the answer is udp glucose a number of diseases can be diagnosed by evaluating activity of 
transaminases. What, uh, what vitamin is one of cofactors of these enzymes? Right. Just to remember, uh, it's vitamin B6, right? Ah, okay, okay. Now I want to, I just want to remind you everything. This one is interesting, right? So we said uh, vitamin B6, the active form will be what? Pyridoxine phosphate, right? And uh, so far we mentioned it that uh, we, we need to give uh, it uh, together with isoniazid, right? Uh, then we we also saw this enzyme in uh, glycogen phosphorylase, right? In uh, in glycogenolysis, right? In in uh, because if you still remember, like the the, the image of that enzyme was it, it was actually like throwing phosphates at uh, uh, on alpha one four glycosidic bonds, releasing glucose one phosphate. If you still remember, right? So that enzyme, it needs uh, vitamin B6. Now again, on transaminases, vitamin B6, right? Okay, cool. Let's continue. By the decarboxylation of glutamate in the central nervous system, an inhibitor mediator is formed. Guys, you need to remember this. We already covered it. It's GABA, right? Gamma amino butyric acid. Right. Just remember, GABA is inhibitor. It's an inhibitor neurotransmitter. Right. So it's GABA. Um, an unconscious patient was taken by ambulance to the hospital. On objective examination, the patient was found to have no reflexes, uh, periodical convulsions, irregular breathing. After laboratory examination, the patient was diagnosed with hepatic coma, right? Uh, disorders of the central nervous system developed due to accumulation of uh, the following metabolite. It's ammonia. Because you see, see, you see this patient has hepatic coma. It, it means uh, the, the detoxification function of the liver, specifically like the urea cycle, is not, it's not happening. That's why we have this accumulation of what? Of ammonia causing this neuro, these neurological symptoms like no reflexes, uh, convulsions, and also like there is no breathing, right? But I need you to remember one thing. To remove ammonia from the central nervous system, we use glutamate, right? Uh, so glutamate plus ammonium, because like uh, this, um, this ammonia NH3 will be in the form of uh, ammonium ion, that's NH4 plus, right? So it will combine with glutamate to form glutamine in the presence of the enzyme. Uh, glutamine synthesis, right? So glutamine itself is a problem, right? It yes, uh, we we uh, removed ammonia, but it is the ability to uh, draw water towards it. So if it is happening, I said in the brain, it causes what cerebral edema. So because it, it increases the in, then it will increase the intracranial pressure, right? Okay, so that's a problem for another day. You need to. Remind me the drugs used for reducing intracranial pressure. Okay, just type in the comment section and we'll discuss from there. Okay, for this case, I said uh, this patient is um, ammonia, right? Uh, there is accumulation of ammonia. A 20-year-old male patient complains of general weakness, rapid fatigability. Uh, irritability and decreased performance uh, and also bleeding gums uh, petechi on skin what vitamin deficiency may be a cause of these changes right if you still remember this one is vitamin vitamin what vitamin c or ascorbic acid right yeah vitamin c or ascorbic acid Right, I'm sure uh, like in, in our next video, we will talk a lot about uh, thiamine, like this one is vitamin B1, and also riboflavin, right? 
we talked about retinol folic acid is b9 it's not um it's not needed here right so these symptoms actually a deficiency of vitamin b3 or ascorbic acid a hospital has admitted a patient complaining of abdominal bloating diarrhea flatulence after eating protein food right so they're talking about degradation of proteins right uh, these signs are indicative of uh, impaired digestion of proteins and their increased degradation. Which of the following compound is the product of this process? It's indole, right? It's indole. It's not bilirubin. Cadaverin is usually like from, uh, from dying tissues and... Uh, and also this one, this uh, putrescine is also like from uh, from dying tissues, right? Right. So here the answer is indoor. Indoor. It is known that monoamine oxidase enzymes plays an important part in the metabolism of catecholamine neurotransmitters. In what way does this enzyme inactivate these neurotransmitters? What? Norepinephrine, epinephrine, and dopamine. Right. Okay. Don't think too much. Just look at the name of the enzyme. Monoamine oxidate, oxidase. Monoamine oxidase. is for oxidation. Right? So what process? Oxidative deamination. That's the answer. Oxidative deamination. Okay. But... The sake of completeness, uh, we are talking about uh, these neurotransmitters, dopamine, uh, norepinephrine, and epinephrine, right? So uh, follow the degradation. From dopamine to norepinephrine, uh, there is dopamine beta hydroxylase, right? So this process is mediated by this enzyme, dopamine beta hydroxylase, which needs vitamin C, right? And uh, from norepinephrine to epinephrine, there is phenylethanolamine N-methyltransferase. No, it's a heck of a name. It's, you don't need to remember it though, All right? Here, just, uh, no, here you have your epinephrine from norepinephrine, right? And then uh, epinephrine will be converted to metanephrine. And from metanephrine, there will be uh, action of this enzyme, monoamine oxidase, right? And also, okay, Remember here on uh, norepinephrine, other than going to epinephrine, we can also go to what? No metanephrine, right? So this this uh, reaction uh, forming vanilleomandelic acid, vanilleomandelic acid, we use the enzyme monoamine oxidase, right? Yeah, that was it. So the answer is monoamine oxidase. Now, uh, let's talk about jaundice. Enzymatic jaundice is uh, accompanied by abnormal activity of UDP glucoronyl transference, right? Okay, UDP glucoronyl transference. This component, this compound is used for conjugation, right? For conjugation of bilirubin. Right. What compound is accumulated in the blood serum in case of um, these pathologies? Right. There is abnormal activity of UDP glucuronyl transferase. I said this one is used for conjugation. Then it means there is no conjugation. Right. So what compound is accumulated in blood serum in case of this pathology is unconjugated bilirubin. Don't think too much. Diseases of respiratory system and circulatory disorders impair the transport of oxygen, uh, thus leading to hypoxia. Under these conditions, the energy metabolism is carried out by anaerobic glycolysis. As a result, the following substance is generated and accumulated, right? Uh, it's lactic acid.
right? But I just want to show you like uh, the pathways, right? Because from glycolysis, glycolysis, the process is actually anaerobic, right? But what will happen is like there are different pathways from pyruvate, the, the end product of our glycolysis. If there is oxygen, it will enter into the mitochondria and convert it to acetyl CoA, and then uh, intermediate pathway, and then the Krebs cycle, right? But if there is no oxygen, it is it's mainly converted uh, to lactic acid by lactic dehydrogenase, right? Okay, let me see. Ah, perfect, right? You can see here, like uh, this, this, this one is is dark. It's mitochondria, right? So in the mitochondria, you see the pathway. Uh, uh, formation of acetyl CoA, and here is anaerobic. That's why you have LDH, lactate dehydrogenase, forming what uh, lactic acid or lactate, right? So these are the main ones. But if you just want to be, I don't know, maybe smart, just know that uh, we can also use alanine transferase uh, from pyruvate to form what um, alanine, right? And this one will be chyle cycle. For lactate is core cycle, right? And also we can convert pyruvate to uh, oxaloacetate, right? But this pathway, remember, is 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 actually uh, in uh, gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis, right? Okay, we will talk about it. I have it too. Okay, uh, six hours after myocardial infarction. A patient was found to have elevated level of lactic dehydrogenase in blood. What isoenzyme should be expected in this case? Right. What is an isoenzyme? Isoenzymes are like uh, these are just different forms of the enzyme, but cat catalyzing like a uh, uh, same reaction. But they differ, for example, like in terms of tissues where they are mostly found in high concentration, right? For so, so for this question, let me just show you like all of them, right? Okay, so lactate dehydrogenase one, this one is found mainly in the heart, right? Uh, and also in red blood cells, right? And it will be elevated in case of acute myocardial infarction. Uh, and also for red blood cells, there is hemolytic anemia, hemolysis, or testicular tumors, right? That's uh, lactate dehydrogenase 1, right? That's the answer because there is myocardial infection, right? Acute myocardial infection. So the elevated one will be what? Uh, LDH1, right? So for lactate dehydrogen two, dehydrogenase 2, it's mainly found in red blood cells and just a little in the heart so it will be high in hemolytic anemia uh, and also in acute mi but it's not in not as high as ldh1 right ldh3 this one is mainly found in the what lungs lymphocytes and spleen and it's usually elevated in case of uh, cancers like uh, if there is metastasis pneumonia or lymphomas right uh, LDH4 and LDH5 these ones are found in liver and skeletal muscle right and they will be elevated in case of hepatic disorders or muscular dystrophy right then then there are other enzymes other forms of LDH here there is LDH X and LDHC, right? These ones are found in uh, testes and various cancers, right? In various cancers, it will be, they will be elevated, right? But no, don't complicate things. Here, just to remember, uh, like, at least uh, one, two, and three. And also four is important, right? So one, that's acute MI, acute myocardial infarction. Okay, next question. A 50-year-old patient with food poisoning is on a drip of 10% glucose solution. It, it, it not only provides the body with uh, necessary energy, but also performs the function of detoxification uh, by the production of a metabolite that participates in the following 
uh, conjugation reaction. Right. So here is the thing, right? Uh, the patient is being given what? A glucose. So it at first we are saying, okay, this is just, uh, you don't need to remember everything. Uh, this, um, these formulas. No, we're not doing farmers, right? Okay, but here we, the patient is being given glucose solution uh, for energy, but he has been poisoned, right? So uh, there is all detoxification function, right? So which means glucose will be converted to something else, right? It will be converted to what? Glucuronic acid. Uh, this one is actually an oxidation reaction, right? So that's why here you have a uh, hydrogen peroxide as an oxidizing agent here. Uh, so there is glucuronic acid. Glucuronic acid is used for what? For conjugation, right? In detoxification process. Um, if you still remember, there are three stages in detoxification, right? There is hydroxylation, conjugation, and excretion, right? For hydroxylation, that's why you have uh that's that is where you have your uh cytochrome P four uh cytochrome P four fifty. Yeah. Yeah, cytochrome cytochrome P four fifty. Yeah. So for uh hydroxylation, it adds an OH group met, making it what? Uh hydrophilic. Then from there, that's where you have conjugation. We can use uh, glucuronic acid, we can use acid, uh, acetyl, we can use um, uh, like some sulfur compounds, right? That's for conjugation and then excretion. That's, it, it's just uh, like uh, uh, releasing it, maybe because it's coming from the liver, maybe through, uh, through bile, right? Okay, that is that. So the... Um, the component needed for detoxification is glucuronic acid and the process this process is uh glucuronidation okay glucuronidation that's new uh the genetic defect of pyruvate carboxylase deficiency is the cause of delayed physical and mental development and early death in children this defect is characterized by lactosemia, lactic aciduria, uh, and disorder of a number of metabolic pathways, in particular, which ones, right? So, if you remember, pyruvate carboxylase, this one is it's an enzyme. Uh, uh, it takes part in what? In gluconeogenesis. Right, but where are we getting these components to make them, uh, to 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 make uh this new glucose? They are intermediates of Krebs cycle, right? So to answer this question, uh, correctly, you need to remember, you know, what, uh, the process of gluconeogenesis and the process of what, uh, and 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 the Krebs cycle, right? But also to to understand uh, gluconeogenesis, you need to know the reverse, the reverse of it. That's glycol glycolysis, right? So let me just combine everything and come up with something solid that can stick into your brain, right? Oh, okay, these are just uh, the symptoms, right? So, okay, let me find uh, somewhere to stay here. Okay, so uh, look, here going down is glycolysis and going up is uh, gluconeogenesis, right? So let's go down first, right? Um, so we, we, we have uh, your glucose. Glucose is uh, converted to glucose 6-phosphate from there, fructose 6-phosphate from there, fructose 1-6-bisphosphate. And this one will be uh, cleaved into what? In, into two, right? Uh, these are three carbon molecules. There is uh, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, right? But here you need to remember that most of this compound will be converted to what? Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, right? So this one, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, will be converted to 
one, two base phosphoglycerate, and then three phosphoglycerate, and two phosphoglycerate, and then from there, uh, is it will be converted to what to PEP phosphoenolpyruvate, right? And then from uh, phosphoenolpyruvate, then we'll get to our what our pyruvate. Right, but there are three enzymes which are because this process, like most of it, is is reversible. But there are some enzymes, uh, like which are reversible. For example, here glucokinase. This one, this process is irreversible. Uh, this one, this enzyme again. Uh, uh, this one is what phosphofructokinase one. It's reversible. Uh, it's irreversible, and. Uh, pyruvate kinase is irreversible so on these three if you want to make um, glucose again for gluconeogenesis you need uh, some new enzymes or some ways to skip to skip these processes for example here you have pyruvate uh, okay I can't show exactly but if you look down here there is pyruvate right it can it cannot go to PEP it cannot go to phosphoenol pyruvate because of pyruvate kinase so we can convert it to oxaloacetate in presence of um, pyruvate carboxylase, right? And this one is happening in the mitochondria, right? And then from uh, oxaloacetate, uh, there will be conversion to PEP, right? Oxaloacetate to phosphoenol pyruvate by the enzyme uh, phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase, right? And then the process will continue up, going up. And then here, uh, or in place of this enzyme, we will use a fructose one six bisphosphate test to destroy. I mean, to 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 mediate the conversion from or, of fructose one six bisphosphate to fructose six phosphate, and then this one is reversible, and then from glucose six phosphate to glucose, there is glucose six phosphate test. Right, and if you still remember this, uh, this enzyme, I said is found in the what, um, in the smooth, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, and mainly is found in the liver. Uh, yeah, for because this process is happening in the liver and other, other, re, uh, uh, other organs include uh, the proximal convoluted tube of the kidney and uh, the enterocytes, right, in the duodenum. Um, then what else? Right. On, let me just check this advantage. Because on, on uh, those uh, uh, glycogen storage diseases, if there is no enzyme, uh, of, if there is no this enzyme, this uh, glucose 6-phosphate test, the disease is called von, Ge von, Geke, von Geikes disease. Right, von Geke's disease is deficiency of glucose six phosphatase. Right. Uh, okay. Let me uh, say it again. I was supposed to say this uh, on uh, glycogenolysis. Right. On glycogenolysis. Uh, I think I will, I will write uh, like uh, on top of this video. I think I will write it down so that you remember as you play it. Right. Okay, so that was uh, gluconeogenesis. But where do you get uh, this pyruvate sometimes, right? So, okay, here is just, uh, uh, this one is Krebs cycle. I want to say much. But I'm saying like, uh, f this pyruvate, you can get it from lactic acid, right? Lactic acid can be converted to pyruvate uh, by the enzyme what? Lactic dehydrogenase, because that process is, 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 is reversible. Uh, and also from lipolysis, from lipids, like lipids are triacylglycerides, right? Using lipase, you can, uh, you can make glycerol and uh, free fat acids, right? Glycerol can be converted into what? Glycerol 3 phosphate. And then glycerol 3 phosphate is actually related to this component called what? dihydroxyacetone phosphate right so you can uh, convert glycerol 3 phosphate into this uh, this molecule and then there will be a, then you will continue with your gluconeogenesis uh, and also about amino acids almost all amino acids can be used for 
uh, gluconeogenesis, except two. These two, they are called, they are purely ketogenic. They are purely ketogenic. And these are leucine and lysine. Leucine and lysine, right? These ones, you cannot use them for gluconeogenesis. They are purely ketogenic, right? Okay, for lactic acid, all right. This is it's just right. So, uh, in this question, the uh, the deficient enzyme was this one, pyruvate carboxylase, right? Pyruvate carboxylase, right? So, if you maybe if you want to review the Krebs cycle, is here, but I don't want to go through it because uh, of time, right? But okay, let's just let's let me just be fast, right? Okay, so uh, from glycolysis, right? Glycolysis is six carbon, right? And then um, making pyruvate, this one, it will be two, right? We can say like from this stage, right? From this stage, we've degraded, uh, we, we have uh, uh, we've broken like this uh, six carbon molecule into three and three, right? So from this one, this one will be two, 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 and everything, right? Including here on pyruvate. So we are saying like it's happening like two times for each uh, glucose, two times for each glucose, right? So the intermediate pathway conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA uh, will combine with oxaloacetate. Uh, all right, I remember a, a certain mnemonic. It says citrate is a starting substrate for making ATP, uh, for making oxaloacetate, right? Citrate is a substrate, is a, a starting substrate for making oxaloacetate, right? Citrate is a starting substrate for making oxaloacetate, right? It's just a mnemonic of uh, remembering like uh, all, all these intermediates right yeah um what else okay let's just continue so the question was asking uh the defect is characterized by what okay like to say me i like to what uh like in particular the following process is inhibited thus what i just explained the citric acid cycle and gluconeogenesis right so gluconeogenesis is uh what you need to look for here right so the answer is a in children with uh lishnian syndrome i mentioned this one before uh so these children have a severe form of hyperuricemia right high amount of uh urea in their blood accompanied by formation of trophy these are like stones urate calculi in the urinary tract as well as uh neuropsychiatric disorders the cause of this disease is the reduced activity of which of the following enzyme if you still remember it it's this one uh hypoxanthine uh okay let me show you first this one this enzyme i i mentioned it previously right uh it's called what hypoxanthine guana guano okay hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase this one hgprt right so if it is deficient then there will be what lishnian syndrome right so this one is the answer hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase all right okay next due to the blockage of common bio ducts which was radiographically confirmed the biliary flow to the duodenum was stopped we should expect impairment of what all right you for emulsification of fats we need bio salts. Which ones? Uh, cholic acid and uh, kinodeoxycholic acid. Those ones are the main ones, right? So if there is blockage, there is no emulsification of fats, right? That's the answer, right? We should expect impairment of uh, fat emulsification if there is a blockage in what? 
so there is a blockage in the uh, in the biliary system in the biliary system right uh okay so like uh for the next uh, questions are uh, there a lot right then there are a lot a lot of questions uh they talk about uh lipoproteins right lipoproteins so here i just it's just a summary of i think the next uh, three to four questions so the answers will come from uh from this picture right so uh remember uh, okay for orientation uh what you are looking at here is uh an enterocyte okay we can say like this one is the g uh, uh, the git and here i just uh pulled out one enterocyte right so this one uh sorry okay this one is an enterocyte uh and this one this structure is a lacteal lacteal is a uh, lymphatic like because like uh, the face are not absorbed directly into the blood but by it's they are absorbed by what a uh, lacteals right lacteals right and we can say like this this component is now um okay let's just say this one is a thoracic duct i'm not going to label it and this one is a uh, venous system and everything right it's not very important but you just need to remember like the first one here uh the git in general then here there is this enterocyte and here lacteal right okay so the first thing you are seeing here is what it's a fat global right it's a fat global and if you still remember there are some vitamins which are called face fat soluble right which ones vitamin a d e and k right you can see them like together here with what with the with your fat global right so these fats will uh uh stimulate the synthesis of uh cholecystokinin by the eye cells of the duodenum right so this cholecystokinin will act on the uh, smooth muscles of the gall blood for contraction releasing what releasing uh, bile right so uh, like in bile i just mentioned it cholic acid and kinodioxicolic acid right so the these bile salts are found what in uh, like okay in in this gall blood right and you can see like this too just for orientation this one is right and left hepatic duct this one is a common hepatic duct and for for from the gallbladder is a cystic duct and everything here combination of common hepatic and um cystic duct cystic duct is actually a what a common bile duct and you can from there there is a hepatopancreatic ampulla right that's where you find uh also a sphincter of odi sphincter of odi right so then uh like then there will be bio here for emulsification and also action of uh uh lipase right lipase and core lipase those ones they will what they will uh cleave because like uh the fats are in general also known as what triglycerides right they have like um uh, they, they have like uh, uh, a a hydro hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tails right so there is a, a cleavage this one will lead to what for to formation of what uh uh free fat acids and what and um uh, because i i said like in general firstly because here here they are they are they are three right there is cleavage leading to what leading to formation of free fat acids and uh monoacyl glyceride here right so in inside this one that's where you find what your free fat acid and monoacyl glyceride right right so this component it also have like this vitamins we talked about like vitamin a d e and k right this component um is called a micelle right a micelle so this micelle will then be absorbed like into the what into the enterocyte right so like uh it is um it goes to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum this one smooth endoplasmic reticulum so there will be resynthesis of triglycerides again right that's why we have your triglycerides inside this new molecule we have right and again 
uh, this black, uh, this one, I said this one is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. This one is a rough endoplasmic reticulum. So this one, it synthesizes uh, two proteins, right? Two apoproteins. The first one is called what? Apoprotein B48. Apoprotein B48. That's the first one. Okay. Uh, so this whole molecule co containing cholesterol, uh, and triglycerides and, and uh, cholesterol esters, right? This component is known as a chylomicron, right? So this one, right? So I said this one is known as a chylomicron, right? Okay. Then uh, we have a severe, right? In We have uh, something called high-density lipoprotein, right? Or HDL, right? So HDL, we already have it here, right? And it is um, an apoprotein called apoprotein A, right? This one, apoprotein A1, right? So this apoprotein A1 is found, uh, I said, in HDL, high density lipoprotein, and its function is activation of what? Of LCAT. LCAT is uh, it's like it's short for less than cholesterol um, acyl transferase, right? That one is uh, it's, uh, an enzyme for esterification, formation of cholesterol esters, right? Okay, now at the moment, now you, you have two things here. You have uh, your HDL and your chylomicron, right? So this HDL will donate something, will donate something to the uh, chylomicron, right? Uh, there are actually two apoproteins, right? There is a C2, apoprotein C2, and apoprotein E, right? So these uh, two apoproteins, particularly the C2, will help uh, like on attachment to the enzyme lipoprotein lipase. Like this one will be destruction of what these lipids. Then this will release uh, uh, free fat acids. Free fat acids can be used for um, like for like for NH. You, if you know your bitter oxidation is from for is from free fatty acids, uh, and glycerol glycerol can be used um, even for uh, gluconeogenesis. If you still remember the pathway from what from uh, glycerol three phosphate to to dihydroxyl acetone phosphate, right? That one the the intermediate of uh, glycolysis, right? Okay, so after the reaction with lipoprotein lipase, it will become something new. It's called what? Um, okay, it's called uh, in a chylomicron remnant, right? But it will give back, because it borrowed uh, uh, two apoproteins from the high-density lipoprotein from here, right? So it will give back the what? The C2, right? It will give back C2, and it will remain with what? With apoprotein E. Right, and I said this one is known as what uh, chylomicron remnant. Then it will go somewhere, it will go to the liver. All right, so uh, it will go to the liver. And if you were wondering, like, why do we have apoprotein B48? Right, this red cap B48 is used here, like, on uh, this one is called what uh, receptor mediated endocytosis. Right, I mentioned this in medical biology right receptor mediated endocytosis uh and this black one is actually heparin sulfate but you don't need to know like all these things everything and um ldl receptor or ldl like receptors right for endocytosis of this chylomicron remnant all right okay so what will happen is like uh, they will th th these uh, cholesterols will be used for different uh, purposes. For example, for making cell membrane, cholesterol esters. This one is for storage and biosalts, right? And biosalts, you know the function already. Okay, so after utilization of cholesterol. Uh, by this process is like sending them to cell membrane, uh, formation of uh, cholesterol esters for storage and biosols. Uh, we will remain with uh, some triglycerides. Uh, 
then there is another uh, another rough endoplasmic reticulum here which will synthesize a new apoprotein it's called apoprotein b100 right apoprotein b100 right so this apoprotein b100 will combine with uh like the the fats which we want to use here right uh so this component is 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 now known as a very low density lipoprotein or vldl right very low density lipoprotein right where will it go this one will go uh back uh for a trade right you know the trade it does the trade with uh, our savior, the HDL. I said this one is healthy, right? It, uh, you know, like consumption of alcohol, please don't drink too much, just a little. It enables the synthesis of high-density lipoproteins. High-density lipoproteins, uh, as you, you will see just a moment, the, its function is like to take... Uh, like to take cholesterol like from different parts of the body back to the what? Uh, to the liver. For esterification, you say the those are cholesterol esters, right? And to make sure like you you don't suffer from like uh different uh disorders mediated by what like uh high levels of cholesterol, you will see them. Uh for now, just to remember where are we? Okay, we are talking about uh VLDL going to visit HDL for an exchange, right? So what does it do? Uh, okay, so it gives the triglyceride and then uh, it will receive what? Cholesterol, right? Then from there, this VLDL, here we have it. Let's just follow it. And then uh, uh, other than uh, cholesterol, it also got uh, uh, an apoprotein, right? Apoprotein E and apoprotein C2 right and then if you see apoprotein e and apoprotein c2 because c2 is, is for interaction with the lipoprotein lipase so they will go to lipoprotein lipase and you know what will happens there if there is degradation of tri triglycerides there is release of um, free fatty acids and glycerol and you know the pathway like how they will be used right okay so now what you are remaining with this component this component is or is known as a uh, VLDL remnant or intermediate density lipoprotein right this one intermediate density lipoprotein right so it will uh, again interact with our savior HDL right uh, and then from there this component will become something new and dangerous this one is called a low density lipoprotein. This one is, uh, some people refer to this one as bad cholesterol, right? So, uh, and also this one will also interact with what? Uh, HDL, right? So, what's the purpose of this interaction? Uh, and what's the enzyme which made it? So, the enzyme which made it this interaction is called what? LCAT. I said it's lethicin. Uh, choles lethicin cholesterol acyl transferase, right? LCAT, right? So, uh, I said, uh, like the HDL will give it uh, what cholesterol, right? So, if we, why is it giving uh, this component cholesterol? Because each of them is going to the liver to leave, uh, to leave cholesterol here in the liver for esterification, right? So, this one will go to the liver. This one is coming from the liver, taking the cholesterol, uh, and then after being IDL remnant, it go back to the liver and leaving the cholesterol here for making cholesterol esters, right? Same as uh, low density lipoprotein, it also goes to the liver, right? Same pathway, right? So uh, the basic thing which will happen here is like you know, like there are some organs which need. Uh, uh, like these uh, fats, for example, for synth synthesis of hormones. So uh, the first one, adrenal glands, and also gonads, right? Gonads, uh, testes and ovaries, right? The, so mediation like of this interaction between low-density lipoprotein uh, and 
adrenal glands and the gonads there are some some kind of receptors called the scavenger receptors one but you don't need to know them okay so i said what adrenal glands and gonads right then what will happen okay so let's talk a little bit about uh, why this kind of cholesterol is bad right why is ldl very bad what will happen is like they are okay we can say like two main pathways right uh this ldls low density lipoproteins they can be oxidized and also they can interact with uh glucose if it is uh, a lot in the blood it will be called a uh, glycated ldl glycated ldl right so this oxidized ldl and glycated ldl will be taken up by macrophages right so if the uh, macrophage take in these kinds of ldl uh it will be converted to form cells right form cells right so these form cells will go to the uh, tunica media of the blood vessels causing atherosclerosis right okay okay <laughs> just to look again um you can take a screenshot and and then uh try to remember the pathway right so yeah it's very important and i said uh the next questions uh they will, will ask a lot about uh this uh lipoproteins and lipoprotein metabolism right so let's start a patient underwent a course of treatment for atherosclerosis okay laboratory tests revealed an increase in uh anti atherogenic lipoprotein right anti atherogenic lipoprotein right so this lipoprotein which has been found uh it, it's it doesn't um we, we can say like it doesn't support formation of uh, atheros atherosclerosis or formation of athero atherosclerosis right right so this one it means it's a good cholesterol because this patient has been receiving what uh some kind of a treatment right so later on uh, in 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 his plasma there is high amount of anti atherogenic lipoprotein right so which one is this it's the high density lipoprotein our savvy right so it's it's a good cholesterol hdl don't drink too much and stop lying to people that you want to increase your hdl because that's what i did and now i can't stop drinking i mean alcohol not water okay a uh, 12 year old patient was found to have blood serum cholesterol at the rate of uh, 25 millimoles per liter the boy has a history of uh, hereditary familial hypercholesterolemia which is caused by impaired synthesis of the following lipoproteins right so just to remember the bad cholesterol is ldl low density lipoprotein right low density lipoprotein ldl okay and okay let's see let's see if you still remember okay so i said um where do we start we start with chylomicrons right chylomicrons from lacteals right uh these ones will react with what with uh lipoprotein lipase and then will go to the liver delivering what uh the cholesterol uh and when it come back from the liver it will be very low density lipoprotein right so vldl is formed by the liver and then it will go to the hdl and then the process will lead to uh formation of a remnant of low density lipoprotein called intermediate density lipoprotein right uh, and if if you still remember this one is the one which will become which will become what a low density lipoprotein later right this one is is bad cholesterol right and i said high density lipoproteins are healthy they are good right oh by the way they are also known as uh they can say what alpha lipoproteins right just remember alpha lipoproteins because i said like uh this high density lipoproteins they have upper protein a1 so you can remember like hdl with upper protein a1 they are alpha lipoproteins yeah just like that 
Okay, another question. A six to seven year old male patient consumes eggs, pork, butter, milk, and meat. Blood test uh, results in what? Uh, 12.3 millimoles per liter, total lipids of 8.2 grams per liter. Increased low density lipoproteins, that's LDL. The LDL, the levels are high, right? What type of uh, hyperlipoproteinemia is observed in this patient, right? Okay, uh, let me just show you, like, in brief, these hyperlipoproteinemias, and then I will tell you how uh, how to separate uh, 2A from 2B. Because, like, because hyperlipoproteinemia 2, uh yes uh there is presence of what presence of uh high cholesterol and also uh ldl right but hypo lipoproteinemia b is the additional thing an additional thing called vldl okay let me just show you maybe you can remember from this okay let me do this right so uh what can i do all right okay let's let's just talk about uh type 2 hypercholesterolemia right this one yes uh because like uh, i i'm saying like the type a is ldl and cholesterol and type b is ldl cholesterol and vldl right so you can see like what is wrong. They can either be absent or defective LDL receptors, right? Or sometimes if there is defective apoprotein B100, right? That's uh, how this type 2 uh, occurs, right? And it's, it's autosomal dominant, right? Okay, let's just complete, okay? Uh, type 1, uh, they, they can be like... Uh, a disorder in lipoprotein lipase or apoprotein C2, right? And uh, in blood, you will see high levels of uh, chylomicrons, triglycerols, uh, and cholesterol, right? On type 3, type 3 is APOE, right? APOE, so type 3, APOE, you can see... Uh, this E, right? And what will be high, there is chylomicron and VLDL. For type 4, uh, there can be hepatic overproduction of VLDL. So if there is overproduction of VLDL, it means in the blood you will see high levels of VLDL and uh, triacylglycerides, right? Okay, so here you can see, like, uh, you, you see, like, high levels of VLDL. So how do you differentiate um, type 2B from type 4? By triglycerides. You can see, like, in type 4, you also find high levels of triglycerides. But for type B, you find LDL, cholesterol, and VLDL, right? Okay, maybe that way you'll be able to remember, right? So, you can take a screenshot and then try to remember everything, including, uh, like, clinical presentations here. Because, uh, like, on this question, we only talked about, uh, like, uh, laboratory details, right? So... So the, 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 this patient has high levels of what? Of LDL, but there is no VLDL. That's why it's hyperlipoproteinemia type A1. This one. Okay. Deficiency of linoleic and... And, okay. Linoleic and linoleic, maybe the other one was supposed to be linoic acid in the body, leads to skin damage, hair loss, delayed wound healing, thrombocytopenia, low resistance to infections. These changes are most likely to be caused by impairment of synthesis of which of the following substances. Right. So if you still remember, uh, 
linoleic acid and linoleic acid these ones are like uh like the the you know arachidonic acid pathway right okay let me just show you okay so uh uh the lino linoleic acid and linoleic acid right they form arachidonic acid right and this arachidonic arachidonic acid uh its degradation will lead to formation of what uh Ecosanoids, right? Ecosanoids are uh, these ones, for example, on prostanoids. That's why you have your prostacycline, uh, prostaglandins, right? And also leukotrins, right? Here, right? So these ones are what? Ecosanoids, ecosanoids, right? Not interleukins, because interleukins usually. Okay. Right. The other thing you can do, you can just subtract or remove uh what do you call what do you call them? Wrong answers. Like interleukins. Interleukins are usually like for uh may, maybe after after an infection, they are there uh also like in stimulation of uh uh cell differentiation like immune cells. Interferons, interferons they are like they fight um viral infections. If you talk about catecholamines, catecholamines, uh, those are epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine. They are neurotransmitters. Corticosteroids. Uh, if you put corticosteroids here, then we will fight, right? So, just to remember, because of this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, linoic acid and linoleic acid, right? These ones we will help you to remember the arachidonic acid pathway, right? um okay so if you want to uh to study this diagram you can just pause and then study it and take a screenshot it will help you to remember All right okay i hope this is the last question guys i'm a little bit tired inherited diseases such as uh mucopolysaccharidosis are manifested in metabolic disorders of connective tissue, bone, and joint pathologies. The sign of this disease is the excessive uh, urinary secretion of which of the following substance, right? So in the connective tissue, you remember connective tissue, you find uh, uh, glycose aminoglycans, right? What are, what are the functions of glycose aminoglycans, right? They have uh, the ability to bind a large amount of water, thereby producing a gel-like matrix that forms the basis of a body structure. Um, and also, the most important part is this one. The uh, glycos, uh, glycos aminoglycans, they stabilize, and, they stabilize and support cellular and fibrous components of tissue, while we're helping them to maintain water and uh, salt balance. Right. Not amino acids, not glucose, lipids, and urea. No. So here the answer is what? Gags, glycose amino glycans. Right. They will be high in the urine. Oh, okay. Okay. This is definitely the last question, guys. All right, so a 46-year-old uh, female patient has a continuous history of bro progressive uh, muscular dystrophy. So this one is Duchenne muscular dystrophy. The other one is called the Becker's muscular dystrophy. All right, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, which blood enzyme changes will be diagnostic value in this case? Right, okay. The first thing, in Duchenne muscular dystrophy, there is... Uh, uh, in, in muscle, there's a protein called uh, dystrophin, right? This dystrophin connects like uh, the cytoskeleton of the cell with what? With our uh, extracellular matrix and also with uh, uh, the sarcoplasm membrane. It's the cell membrane of the, of the muscle cells, right? So like this one will stabilize the muscles. If, if there is no dystrophin, if there, if there is a deficiency or a misfolded protein, uh, of dystrophin, then there will be what 
uh, this kind of dystrophy, the muscle is not strong, then uh, there will be leakage of uh, leakage of uh, uh, enzymes because in muscles, muscle contraction, just to remember, are creating uh, phosphokinase, right? So it will be released. That was that was, that is what they are asking you. Uh, if you remember your your what? Where do we do these ones? We, okay, I did it in physiology, right? Creating phosphokinase will be released if there is a uh, continuous damaging of muscles, right? And this enzyme also it can be released, uh, uh, like if there is some kind of MI, right? Myocardial infection, and also it's released, uh, like from the brain also. Right, just remember muscles, brain, and the heart. Specifically, here is what uh, muscular dystrophy. Right, so creating phosphokinase or creating kinase is the diagnostic um, enzyme. Right, so creating phosphokinase. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos, right? I think I will be uploading uh, videos like every Saturday, right? So next Saturday will be part two and I think we will cover a lot more papers because we will be revising. We covered the basic concepts here. Thank you so much and God bless you.